Welcome back. This is vlog number three. It is the very next day. We're still at Pepper Mill Wendover and the promotion is still going on. That is a random name is drawn for $100 and then the next pot on that table is splashed for $100. It only takes a couple minutes to get seated and we're at one three. We bu we're buying in for 200. We only get a few good hands this time, but they are some big ones. So let's get to it. I pick up 10 Ada Diamonds on the button. Under the gun limps, middle position limps, eye limp, and the small line big blind complete. The flop comes six of diamonds, seven of diamonds, four club. There is $15 in the pot. Under the gun leads out for 12. I call and the small blind makes it 40 to go. Under the gun then re-raises to 150. It is a limped pot, but the under the gun could have been slow playing aces, kings, queens, ace, king in hopes that someone would be betting it pre-flop. It's also possible they have some kind of uh, overcards with diamonds, like ace king of diamonds, ace queen of diamonds, something like that. They could potentially have a set here or a draw of some kind. The small blind likely either hit a pair or a draw, possibly a set, likely a pair with a draw. I have a straight flush draw here. I started the hand with 320 and the pot is already $237. If I raise, the small blind's probably gonna fold and I'll be heads up with the under the gun player. If I just call, then the small blind may call the 150 or he might shove over the top. This would leave me with only about 150 behind. The small blind started with 600 and the under the gun still has a couple hundred behind. If I hit, I want the biggest pot possible and I'm not going to be folding to these guys with 15 outs twice. So I just elect to call the $138. The small blind shoves his entire stack and the under the gun quickly calls. I think about it for a minute and then I make the call. The turn is the king of spades. The river is the jack of diamonds. Under the gun shows five three of diamonds for a flop straight and a flush draw. I take it down and almost triple up. The next hand I look down at rockets in the cutoff. Under the gun makes it eight to go. Under the gun plus one calls. I bump it up to 25 and the under the gun plus one calls. There's 62 in the pot, and the flop comes. Seven of diamonds, eight of clubs, five of spades. Under the gun plus one bets out 35, and I elect to just call. I want to keep in as many of his weak hands as possible. If he's bluffing here, I want him to keep bluffing on the turn. I also don't want to raise this flop when I have uh, just one pair, and I have position. The turn's the two of hearts. He bets out 60. I don't see any reason to raise here, so I go ahead and call. Now the river comes the eight of spades. He shoves his last 60 bucks. I think it's an easy call, I show, and he shows pocket sixes, I take it down. It's about two hours before I pick up the next hand. It is King Deuce of Diamonds, and I'm in the low jack. It's folded around to me, and I open it up for 11. The high jack, the button, the small blind, and the big blind all make the call. The flop comes the Ace of Diamonds, Queen of Diamonds, Eight of Clubs. Typically, I'll check here with being out of position, but with the nut flush draw, and this hitting my range really hard with the nut advantage, I like to bet out to prevent a check through. I make it 35. Only the button makes the call. We're going to the turn, and it is a six of diamonds. Since I've now got this locked up, I decide to check it over to him. If he's got a big hand, I expect that he will bet to block drawing hands. And if he's got nothing, he might bluff, receiving my check as weakness. And the bet on the flop is just a regular continuation bet with anything. He does bet 25. I think that's pretty small, so I go ahead and raise it up to 75, and he makes the call. Now the river comes the eight of spades. With my check raise on the turn, I highly doubt he is going to be betting this river, so I bet out 150. My line doesn't make a whole lot of sense. He probably thinks I was just trying to buy it because he bet so small on the turn it looked like weakness. So from his point of view, I may just be attacking weakness. He does snap call and shows jack of diamonds for a smaller straight. It is another hour before I pick up my next hand, eight of clubs, eight of spades, in the big blind. The button makes it eight, the small blind calls, and I complete. The flop comes the king of spades, seven of spades, five of diamonds. It checks to the button who continues for 15. He could be doing this with his entire range. The small blind folds. Now I have the eight of spades with some backdoor draws, as well as the pair. There's a possibility I am already ahead, so I make the call. Turn is the three of clubs. I check to keep all his bluffs in, he makes it 25. Nothing's really changed, so I make the call. I could be betting out here to protect my eights, but as long as he keeps betting, I don't, I don't need to bump up the pot with marginal hand. River comes the two of clubs. 
I jack and he bets out 60. I'm fairly certain that I'm ahead here. He's bet all the streets, pre-flop, flop, turn, river, and he's really just representing that king, which is a small part of his overall range. There were some draws, and they all missed except for 6-4, which there are very few combos of. So I call the 60, and he instantly mucks. In my last hand of the session, I'm under the gun plus one, and I look down at pocket nines. The under the gun limps, and I make it 18 to go. Only the under the gun calls. The flop comes 9-6-6. Six, six. Bingo! This is a buddy flop. I don't think he's really going to be putting in any more money. I could check this, but then he's just going to check the turn, and we're just going to check it all the way down. So I just start to bet out small, hoping that he's got overcards, a pair, a draw, anything. I bet $10, and he folds. I stick around for four more hours without getting any hands, and I decide it's time to go. I was in for 200 and out for 13.45 for a profit of 11.45. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share if you want to see more of these. It really helps out the channel. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.